Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Momon and today I will review the second studio album by the progressive death metal, progressive metal, rock, jazz fusion band, Cynic. A big fan of the band. I really love their focus album, you know, which is of course a classic in Aeroscope. It was very poorly received, I believe, at the beginning of their career because it was just a very old album. It was, you know, technical death metal with some jazz fusion. It was just very weird. So they shortly disbanded after that album and you know after um, being on the Death Human album so and they just kind of did their own thing I'm pretty sure and then they returned with this album Trace and Air 15 years after the debut album so and they had quite some time to follow it up and it's actually not a very long album it's only 37 minutes or something it's 34 minutes and it's um, there's a demo song on this as well, the, the last song, which is uh, Adam's Murmur, the demo bonus track, which I kind of like. And that's a bonus, which uh, makes this album 38 minutes in a way. Still pretty short. I prefer the album with the demo song because, um, you know, the album is a bit longer, so I do like that. But I wouldn't necessarily um, include it because include it into this review because no, no uh, side mentions it, so there you go. It's a Japanese bonus song, so do it what you will. And requested by Dan Souls. I think he's a fan of the band. I, li I really like this band, so there you go. But, you know, this band isn't for everyone. Um, yeah, you know, they're definitely a weird kind of progressive death metal band or, you know, now progressive rock metal band. So, if, you're, if you don't like them because they are kind of weird, then, you know, don't touch them. If you're not into very weird kind of avant-garde kind of prog metal then don't listen to this but if you're kind of a weird fuck like me and you like weird uh, freaky shit like this then you know join the team we have the first song Nunk Fluence Nunk Fluence I'm not sure how you say this one but this was a very spacey trippy uh, intro song uh, yeah just very vibey and shit like that and you know it kind of starts off slowly like the last song that I reviewed but Still really nice to listen to, very nice pleasant uh, sounds to the record and it starts off the album pretty nicely and pretty unexpected after you know 15 years of silence from this band and then start off with kind of a dozer like this. Not a bad thing, I really like this song but um, you know I wouldn't really say an opening track but at the same time none of the tracks are really opening songs, uh, opening song appropriate I would say so do whatever what you want. Now we have the space for this, which is a bit more brooding, a bit more heavier. Uh, it's twice as long as the Numfluencer song. Uh, this song has a lot of layers. It is also kind of the same as Numfluencer's, as in it's very spacey and vibey and shit like that. But it still has a lot of room, a lot of space, if you will, pun totally intended, uh, for you know to experiment and to have the cynic uh, trademark style. Uh, the song reaches a lot of spaces. In very little time or in nearly six minutes, so that's still a lot of time. Great song, I really like it, and um, it's one of my favorites. Mm, I will think about it. It's, it's a pretty good song though. Every song here is favorite, a uh, potential favorite though, so there you go. Now we have El Evolutionary Sleeper. This is a very um, chill song. Um, you know, it's kind of, uh, sounds like a very evolutionary song in a way, as in, the song kind of builds up and builds up and it just kind of comes to this climax in a way. Which I really like, I really like the build up of the song, I really like how it uh, kind of starts off a bit more mellow and then kind of climaxes towards the ending and then it just kind of goes into a sleepy kind of vibe mood like the first two songs. Very great build up song, really good, I really like it. Now we got Integral Bird which is uh, kind of a heavier song, kind of goes back to the more focused roots of the band. A uh, really good song, pretty heavy. Uh, it's probably the heaviest song so far. I really liked it. Um, yeah, I think it's a great song. Um, yeah, it's pretty brooding, I would say. Probably the heaviest song so far is the the, the centerpiece of the of the record. Uh, yeah, pretty heavy song. That's all I can really say. If you still want that focus era scenic, then listen to In Integral Bird. That's probably your, your best bet. And then we have the Unknown Guest, which was a very great song. Uh, really mysterious sounding, very spacey again, but with some heavy 
interludes and with some really quiet melodic parts. So this song was very heavy, uh, you know, very diverse, I would say. Uh, very mystique and interesting at the beginning, you know, when uh, the band was meeting the known guest and then they met the guest and it was kind of heavy and then, you know, they went to this comatose state again, which I really like. I really like that vibe that they created on there. So this is definitely one of my favorite songs. It's uh, one of the most fluent ones, so there you go. Really good track. Then we get Adam's Murmur, which is, I believe, the most popular track of this album. Um, you know, it is the only track that has a bonus, a Japanese bonus track, so I think it's the most popular. It's three and a half minutes long, it's very uh, fluent, it's very catchy. It's uh, kind of more on the jazz fusion side, it's very melodic, it's very quiet in a way. It's kind of like the progressive rock song of the, of the album. Uh, it's just a very melancholic, really great song to listen to, I really like it. Um, it's my favorite of the album. Um, I mean, it's really difficult to pick a favorite on this album. It's like picking your favorite child. It's it's all really good. So I don't know. It's one of my favorites. It's really quiet and nice. It's, yeah, it probably is my favorite. I really like the the tone and the style of the song. Really love it. Then we got King of Those Who Know. Um, this was actually a very heavy track. This is definitely the most the heaviest track on the album. Integral Birth comes close, but I think King King of Those Who Know is pretty heavy as well. Is the longest song on the album uh, being six minutes and nine seconds long. Um, yeah, this track was pretty brooding. It's, it's a pretty epic kind of uh, closing track, almost in a way. Uh, kind of, you know, it kind of sounds like I'm watching a Game of Thrones episode. You know, pre season eight. Sounds pretty epic. Sounds pretty cool. I really like it. Um, it's a pretty grand track, so it's definitely an epic track. Um, I personally prefer the um, a bit more of the vibey, a bit of the more early spacey side of the record, like the first two tracks. Really like that shit, so it's not per se one of my favorites because I'm more into that stuff. But uh, you know, this is still a really epic track though, I still really love it, but it's not one of my favorites. And then we have Nunk Stands, which is a very interesting title. Oh, it actually starts, it starts with Nunk Fluences and it ends with Nunk Stands. I never, I never saw that, but there you go. The tail ends of the album are both Nunk, whatever that means. Sounds really weird. Uh, Nunk Stands is kind of an appropriate closing song. It kind of, you know, sounds like Nunk Fluence, but it's kind of more of the uh, epilogue. Uh, or wait, what was it? The... Oh, wait, I believe the epilogue is the opening and the prologue... Uh, I can't be asked. Uh, fucking hell, but... I really want to search this up though. Like I, I want to say it right. Prologue. I believe prologue is the ending, right? Prologue. Um. Oh yeah, it's the um, it's the beginning. Prologue. Epilogue is the ending. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The uh, the epilogue of the album. I want to say that cool. I want to say that in a cool way. Uh, this is the epilogue of the album. Really great epilogue. Uh, epilogue, epilogue, epilogue. <laughs> you know, just learn that fucking word and, you know, spamming the shit out of it. Well, I already knew the word, but, you know. Uh, you know, I, I get those two twists, prologue and epilogue. But epilogue is the ending, the, the epic send of us, suppose. So there you go. Um, yeah, this album is pretty great. I really love every song of this album. Um, yeah, personally my favorites are Nung Fluence, the prologue was really great of this album, uh, the, the space for this is pretty fucking vibey, love that shit. Integral Birth is pretty heavy, uh, Adam's Murmur is a great track, uh, what else do I really like? Uh, those two tracks, Integral Birth. Oh yeah, I love the Unknown Guest, the, the spicy vibe that I get from it, really love that shit. So uh, two, three, four, five, yeah, uh, five of these tracks are like... Five of my favorite Cynic songs, so there you go. Uh, Influences, The Space For This, Integral Birth, The Unknown Guest, and Adam's Murmur are all my, some of my favorite Cynic tracks, so there you go. I like Evolu Evolutionary Sleeper, um, King of Those Who Know, and Sunk Stand, but I prefer the prologue of this album, and you know, I just like the vibey shit a bit more. But I think this album is still really great. Um, yeah, I will give this album a 10 out of 10. I enjoyed every track of this album. Really love the atmosphere that they have on there. And it's arguably an even better album than Focus, in my opinion. But that's, of course, an unpopular opinion. 
Uh, thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel for future lives, man. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.